In this video, I wanna share with you five things that I wish I knew at the beginning of my career. Let's get into it. Woo! So number one, Googling your way out of a problem is a skill. And just like all other skills require practice and you're not gonna be good at it right off the bat, so too when you're stuck with a problem and then you turn to Google to try to help yourself get unstuck to try to solve that problem, understand that Googling and knowing how to use Google to solve your problems is a skill and it requires practice just like any other skill. At the beginning of my career, when I used to be stuck with problems, I would very often try to then turn to Google because I knew that as a programmer, that's what you do. You're stuck with a problem. You then go to Google, try to find the solution, try to find the answer to your problem. Turns out though, it never really worked for me because I had no idea how to even Google. I didn't really know how to ask my question, didn't know how to formulate my thoughts. And then on the off chance that I did actually stumble across some kind of stack overflow post that seemed to relate to my problem, I didn't really know whether or not the answer is actually solving my problem because I missed some key, you know, vocabulary, some key terminology, didn't quite understand how to read other people's code. And so naturally I had no idea how to actually take what I was looking at and then apply that to my own problem to then solve my issues. But over time I started to realize that the more I did this, the more I practiced, the more I actually got better at it. And eventually when I started actually getting stuck on a problem, instead of me having to immediately go and ask myself of tech lead to help me get unstuck, I managed to kind of get myself unstuck by actually Googling. Turns out it was a skill that simply required practice. The second point is make sure that you never actually get attached to your code. It's inevitable at some point in your career, you'll have spent a lot of time in a particular feature, lots of effort, and then a manager is going to come over to you and say, sorry, but we're scrapping the feature. This is something that is inevitable. It's simply going to happen. Now, if you're attached to your code, this can be a very, very devastating moment. And trust me, I know I've been there. Now, at my first job, there was this like really big, complicated form that I was kind of working on. It was like a big sort of form stepper, multiple different steps. Each step within the form had lots of different questions, lots of validation, lots of sort of interaction. And it was a very sort of complicated feature. And I spent probably a couple of months, honestly, working on that. After I was basically done developing it, they started to realize that, you know what, there's a far better way of actually building that particular feature. And they decided to go in a very different direction there by making my entire work obsolete. Obsolete. And at the time, that was a real blow. Like I felt really, really devastated by this. But the truth of the matter is, looking back at this now, the fact that I actually got to spend those two months working on that particular project using React, that basically set up my career to where it is right now. I mean, I can honestly say that one of the sort of most important attributes about my career is the fact that I'm really good at React. In fact, I once even held a job where my entire title was React developer. That is one of the sort of key skills that I offer. And I think in big part, that is thanks to that one entire feature that I actually spent so much time working on that's not even getting used. At the end of the day, when you actually get that hands-on experience of building a real life feature, whether or not it's actually getting used, but it's a real life feature with its own complicated different things you have to actually do and solve for different problems. That's when you learn the most. So rather than kind of getting attached to your code and kind of getting upset that it's not getting used, at least appreciate the fact that you got a chance to write that code and learn from it. Because ultimately, as a developer, some of the best satisfaction that you can derive from your work is simply progressing and learning and growing as a developer. And the best way to learn is, of course, through actual hands-on experience. So don't worry about whether or not your code gets used. Don't worry about having your code get scrapped. Don't be attached to your code. Simply enjoy the fact that you get to write the code and learn from it. The third point is don't compare yourself to others. Don't compare your career progress to other people. I remember the first job that I worked at, there were two other people that were working there with me and the three of us all had roughly the same amount of experience, which was somewhere between six months to a year of experience. And at the time, I remember there was one guy that was like really good with databases. And then the other guy was actually really good with some of those computer science concepts like database uh, or data structures and algorithms. And at the time, I actually remember feeling so jealous. I kept saying like, why can't I know databases as well as that guy does? Or why am I not so good with the computer science stuff as that guy is? As I started thinking about this more and more, it then dawned on me that, you know what? Whenever either one of those guys have a React question or kind of a front-end question in general, whether it's CSS, JavaScript, or React, they came to me. Turns out I was their React guy. I would go to the one guy for database questions, go to the other guy for the computer science questions, but then they came to me for the React question. It turns out that what you actually get good at, it entirely depends on what you're interested in. In other words, whatever you have the more interest in is what you're then going to spend more time learning and as a result, get better at. So just because somebody's better at one particular thing than you are doesn't necessarily mean that they're a better developer than you are. It's like comparing apples to oranges. They like that, therefore they spend more time learning that and you like like this, therefore you spend more time learning this. Everyone has their own sort of key interests and likes different things. It's not like those guys were good at databases, good at you know data structures as well as React. They weren't because that's not what they were spending time on. They spent time in the databases, he spent time in the data structures, and I spent time in the React. We all had our own individual interests and thereby got better at the things that we spent more time learning. The fourth point is it's okay to apply to a job that's looking for a technology stack that is different than your own. So for example, let's say that you're finding like some kind of job listing that's asking for a web developer, full stack web developer, but the technology that they're looking for might be Python or Go. Now you being a Node guy might be thinking to yourself, well, wait a second, I only know Node. I don't know Python or Go. I'm not going to apply to that job. In my opinion, I believe that that's actually a mistake. See, as a programmer, the biggest asset, the biggest value that you bring is not about what you currently know, but it's more about what you can actually figure out. And now while this isn't always true, in most cases, or in a lot 
of cases, I should say, companies are totally okay with you not currently knowing something because they know that you're a programmer and part of being a programmer means that you're gonna be figuring things out. So instead of looking at what they, what you currently know, they look at your potential. They wanna see, are you eager to learn new things? Are you passionate? Are you interested? Do you actually wanna go ahead and actually spend the time to learn something new? And if you can demonstrate that, then they're more than willing to give you a shot because ultimately that means you have talent, you have potential and potential is far more valuable than what you currently know in many, many instances. So just because you actually see a job list and it's actually asking for a technology stack that is not your own, don't hesitate to apply. This might entirely be a company that's totally willing to take a shot on you and let you learn something new. Maybe you want to learn Python. Maybe you want to learn Go. That's a great opportunity to actually go ahead and do that. In fact, I actually once interviewed with a company. I actually got to the third round of interviewing with this particular company. Their backend technology was Go. Their front end was React, but they're actually looking for a full stack developer, which meant that whoever's going to be taking this role must also work on the backend with Go. And despite the fact that I made it very clear to the hiring manager that I don't know Go, I'm a node guy. I do know React, but I don't know Go. They were okay with that because ultimately what they were looking for was for that eagerness, that passion, that willingness to learn, which I demonstrated. I clearly said, you know what? Go seems really cool. I want to learn that. I don't know it right now, but I'll do my best to actually make sure and learn it. And the interview process went on to totally fine. I got through the first round, got through the second round, and we were in the middle of talking about actually scheduling the third round, but then actually ended up getting an offer with a different company, which is why I didn't actually proceed with that particular company. But the fact of the matter is my not knowing Go in no way, shape, or form hindered me from actually progressing through the interview process with that particular company. So if you see a job listing that has a different technology stack, don't hesitate, apply. You might be more than surprised to see that, you know what? Companies are willing to take a shot at you because as a programmer, like I said, it's not about what you know, but it's about what you can figure out. The last point that I want to talk about is the fact that programmers who you look up to who seem like really smart or know-it-all programmers, they got there by solving problems that they weren't qualified to solve. Basically, what I mean by that is sometimes during your career, what's going to end up happening is you'll be presented with a task. And this task seems very complicated, one that you feel like you're not qualified to solve. And so your instinct will be like, you know what? Nope, I don't want to take this on. Give it to the other guy. I don't feel like I'm qualified to solve this. That's what you might want to say. I urge you not to do that. When a really complicated feature comes up, a really complicated task comes up, grab it, take it. Because remember, by solving problems that you think you're not qualified to solve, that's how you become qualified. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. That's how you can actually excel and level up your web development skills. It's by doing the very difficult problems. Take them, break it down, solve them chunk by chunk, bit by bit, learn as you go, and watch yourself progress and actually grow leaps and bounds and become a far better developer then as you are right now. Well, anyways, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like. It really helps the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one. Woo!